Okay, this video is part five, Is Psychiatry a Joke? Uh, with Peter Gochke. This guy's a genius, famous professor. Um, we'll show you his work here. I'll get myself out of the way. So this is Peter Gochke. He became very famous uh, working at the Cochrane Collaboration, which used to be known as the reliable place to get you know, a third-party objective opinion. Like so many other things in healthcare, it has been corrupted and sort of bought out, and it's no longer uh, that good. It's once in a while, it's okay, but it's not what it used to be. Okay, so this is a lecture. I'll put the link below from Peter Gochke. He's got several online video lectures. He also became very famous for saying that mammography was a waste of time and a few other things. Um, let's see. Big. Ph These are some quotes from Peter Gochke. Big Pharma has bought off the research psychiatrists. Antidepressants often kill old people. Antidepressants have no benefit. They often cause impotence, and that can impair relationships for people working through their problems. We should not use psychiatric drugs at all. That's a big quote. We should not use psychiatric drugs at all. In another statement, he said, if we're going to use them at all, we should decrease their usage by about 98%, like maybe a brief uh, usage to get the situation under control, especially you would think with the antipsychotics, for example, but not longer than that. Um, he says that... Psychiatric drugs do far more harm than good. In general, uh, prescription drugs are the number three cause of death overall. So that would be coronary artery disease, number one, heart disease, number two, cancer, and number three, uh, prescription drug side effects. Um, I would even say, you know, we don't want to parse this out too much, but I think uh, dementia. A lot of people are demented. They might die, you know, 15 years later of a heart attack, but their life is pretty much over once they become demented. And I think that's actually probably right up there, if not the most common. Um, other things that he says, it's never been documented that psychiatric diseases cause brain damage, but the drugs do. They cause permanent brain damage. Okay. And then he says it is not popular to tell the truth in healthcare. And that's very much the case. I've been kind of freaked out that I'll discover how something works in some disease and there will be zero interest in it. The individual physicians want to know. They're, they're curious. They care about figuring things out and wanting to help. The journals won't publish it. And just take a look. You know, all the high-fat phonies uh, talking about high-fat diets for prevention of dementia, which is ridiculous. The higher the percent of fat for the diet, the fatter the person gets, the more likely they are going to be um, hypertensive, diabetic. And you got, like, Best sellers recommending high fat diets for prevention of dementia. It's insane. You know, and then somebody like me who tells you the truth gets almost no views. McDougal gets a lot of views, but McDougal also, you know, uh, we'll talk about that some other time. He's under a lot more pressure, I think, than you would realize. Okay. Um, so, anyways, we'll, we'll talk about that some other time. So, here's uh, one of Peter Gochke's books Deadly Psychiatry and the Organized Denial. Uh, over 500 million people, in his opinion, 500,000 dead in this one year. He fell from psychiatric drugs. Okay, here's another one of his books on uh, psychiatric-related topics, The Mental Health Survival Kit and Withdrawal from Psychiatric Drugs. Yeah, it can be, people can become addicted to those drugs. It can be very difficult to withdraw. It takes time. Uh, here's some quotes on the back cover of that book. Why you should not, not see a psychiatrist if you have a mental health issue. Psychiatric drugs are addictive and can lead to permanent, permanent brain damage. The biggest lie in psychiatry is the one about a chemical imbalance being the cause of psychiatric disorders. Yeah, that's total BS. And that gets told to patients like as if they had diabetes and they need insulin. It's absolute BS. Psychiatric diagnoses are unscientific. And the doctors disagree widely when making diagnoses. Um... Why psychotherapy and other psychosocial in, in, interventions should be preferred over drugs. Yeah, we talked about that before in my lecture about soteria and schizophrenia, that they got much better results, many fold better results by not taking the drugs. Okay, here's just one little thought on, um, this is on fluoxetine, also known as Prozac. And the flu, fluo, that comes from fluoride, okay, can help a lot of drugs cross the blood-brain barrier, but it's also a neurotoxin itself, so it gets the neurotoxin into your brain, and you've heard that abbreviation, that prefix many times, look at fluoroquinolones, the antibiotic, it also gets them into the brain, gets them into the testicles, across the blood-brain barrier, blood testes barrier. Okay, so a lot of psychiatric drugs are mitochondria inhibitors, and like the last thing in the world I would want is a mitochondria inhibitor. Uh, Haldol and other antipsychotics, many of them are inhibitors of mitochondrial electron transport. Uh, 
serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors like sertraline and other ones are often inhibitors either of uh, ATP synthase or other parts of the mitochondrial electron transport. Here we got um, like trazodone, for example, is an inhibitor of complex one, and some other SSRIs are inhibitors. Um, I think as citalopram is also of complex one. So yeah, you don't want to be taking mitochondrial inhibitors. Are you kidding me? Okay, now here's something that I thought was quite funny. So here's there's all this enthusiasm about Prozac, okay? And I remember back in the day, uh, Prozac was super popular. When it first came out, everybody thought it was the miracle drug. Everybody believed that idea of one neurotransmitter at a synapse and Prozac makes everything better and makes people happy. And, you know, my father was a psychiatrist and I can remember the exuberant enthusiasm. And I can remember my mom, who was not a psychiatrist at all, my dad had a bunch of free samples and her friend was sad about something. And she said, oh, well, I gave her some <laughs> free samples and now she's doing much better. That would be an example of how crazy the enthusiasm was. No understanding whatsoever, but they were told by the drug companies, this is all there is to it. Just, you know, you're, you have a deficit in this neurotransmitter. This increases it. Everything is good. Okay, so the reason why I want to show just how insane the whole thing was is take a look at this paper here. Antidepressant fluoxetine induces necrosis by energy depletion and mitochondrial calcium overload. Okay, this is an oncology journal. What these authors are doing is they are recommending that Prozac be used for cancer chemotherapy because it's good at killing cells. Okay, so do you think this is what you need when you're sick? Something that should be used for cancer chemotherapy in the opinion of these authors? It's a rather insane statement. So what they're saying is that Prozac is an inhibitor of electron transport inside the mitochondria, in the, in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And this depletion of the ability of the mitochondria to produce ATP leads to an inability of the cells to pump calcium out of the cell. Um, and thus, calcium accumulates in the cytoplasm and it starts to accumulate in the mitochondria and then the cell dies, it goes into apoptosis. Okay, so... I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that, that the drug is so harmful they think it should be used for cancer chemotherapy, you know. And, and that's, this is the opposite of the original uh, enthusiastic spectrum Prozac came in under, okay. And then I'll also tell you, you know, what will it take to get things better? And people can laugh, you know what, I've been a doctor over 30 years. I've been in the medical business a long time. My father's a doctor. I grew up around a bunch of doctors. I got a bunch of doctors in the family. And I can tell you, this is the only thing that will save medicine. If people respect Christian ethics, you don't got to be Christian, but there has to be respect for sort of the Bible-based ethics and Christian ethics that man is created in the image of God, therefore he's part divine. You don't abuse him. Look at the Harvard doctors, all these Harvard psychiatrists making millions of dollars by prescribing drugs that hurt children. They would poison children. Okay, that's what they do. That's what Harvard does. That's why, you know, when somebody says Ivy League or big name university, I have zero respect for those places, none, because I know the truth about stuff, okay? I trained at these places. And I can tell you, if you don't respect the individual, there's always far more money to be made by lying to people and ripping them off and giving them treatments that don't work. We talked about this in the context of heart disease. And that will always continue. And I'll also tell you, Ayn Rand, she's a grouchy little genius, but she's right. She says the smallest minority is the individual. If, the, if you have respect for individual rights, you'll respect everybody's rights, and you don't need to play all these other games. And until that day comes, there'll be endless fighting, endless lying, endless abuse of, of weak individuals. Because I tell you, tons of people that come into the healthcare system and they get chumped and abused and ripped off. It happens all day long. And the docs are totally ignorant of nutrition and toxicology and epidemiology, which are the most important things to know in health. Um, and that's especially for internal medicine and internal medicine-based subspecialties. But what I'm saying is it will be impossible to fix this problem until you respect the individual. And I can also tell you it is currently built into educational training, into pre-med and med school, that humans are just talking monkeys, that evolution explains everything, there's nothing special or divine about humans. And once you go down that path, it's essentially all over. You can train them or tell them anything you want. So all these individuals, I know all these medical students when they start out, they have the best of intentions, the vast majority of them, but they get corrupted by the system. The system rewards conformity, keep your mouth shut, sell as many drugs as you can, don't ask questions, respect the, the standard of care. So anyways, there it is, Prozac recommended for chemotherapy, Peter Gochke. I'll have the link to Peter Gochke's lecture um, below here. 
Uh, you can see it, and you know he's just one of many. Any intelligent person who studied psychiatry realizes it's a joke.